Hello, um, basically I wanted to make this video a long time ago but I thought I would wait until I actually had the diagnosis which I got last summer but I've clearly been so busy so I haven't had the time. Also, first of all, apologies for my voice. I seem to have got tonsillitis and laryngitis during all this so that's brilliant. Typical me. Um, so yes, um, obviously this weekend was meant to be the endo march and Obviously I was going to go and last year we went and my filming group we filmed it and we were like so involved with it and I was really excited to actually go this year and just like take part in it and it's really nice for everyone to come together. Um, and basically obviously that can't happen this year because of the coronavirus. Um, and so I thought well, what do I think? Sorry, chat an absolute bear. I thought right I'm going to do a video, I'm going to do the video I've wanted to do about like what it is, what happens to me, and also the hashtag why we end o March um, that's going to be going around social media tomorrow when, well, today if I post it on Saturday. I don't know what day it is. Yeah, so I'm going to be doing that. Now I'm basically just explaining like my story and why I end o March and why it's important to me. And I do bang on about it a lot, I understand that, but if you have it, you know why we bang on so much because it is such a difficult thing. To live with and cope with but um I need some water. right so basically i've had to write down pointers because i can't remember this literally started how long ago did all this start i was 11 years old when i first started my period and i was quite young and i was like oh for god's sake here we go i remember it being so painful straight away and constant 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 there was like never a break and obviously there's meant to be a break and they just said right we'll put you in the pill then. And I thought, oh, I'm how old was I then? I was, yeah, 11 years old, I just said that. So yeah, I was in year like seven, eight, and they put me on the blooming pill. Absolutely not loving life with that. And obviously, as anyone knows, the pill can make you go completely west, like my head was just spinning. I've written pointers down, because this, I got so much to say. Not very professional, I'm aware, but as we all know, when I present, I have to, I have to have a sheet. Right, that was it. So yeah, year seven, obviously my skin was really bad and I started off and I, I did, I kind of just thought that was normal. I thought that is what a period is supposed to be. Like I'm meant to have horrendous skin 24 seven. I'm meant to be in agony all the time. This is just what being a woman's about, is it? And I was like, fair play. Even my mum didn't really know much about it at the time. Um, even though we've later realized that she had the exact same thing. I haven't even told you what endometriosis is. You probably know because I bang on and on and on. Basically, it's when I don't want to actually, I can't really explain it because I might get it scientifically wrong. I just know that it's like when the lining of the uterus and the womb grows outside and attaches to different organs. I honestly, I don't want to be full blown explaining it though because I will be getting it wrong. And I know it's weird because I have it and I've done all this research, but the scientific side, I'm like, right now, nah, I can't because it makes me feel queasy. So. Look it up if you're confused. Right, yeah, so I was told this was all normal. Right, popped on the pill. Crazy, crazy, I felt. Yeah, ain't gonna lie, the pill made me depressed. Um, and I wasn't really ever a depressed person. I've always been quite lively, I think. Um, and it just, I felt awful. Like, I felt genuinely awful. I actually remember being in year eight and I was in so much pain with my stomach well my womb that I was like I was led on the floor like just like oh my god and I would have to go and get a hot water bottle from the nurse every single day and I was like what the I thought what is going on mad that's that yeah basically so I'm back and forth the hospital and the doctors all the time asking like is this normal why am I still in so much pain like what is going on because I I knew something wasn't right and I thought right something's got to change so I'm down the GP 24 7 like right what is happening here and um they're like it's fine let's just try you on a different pill it's the type of pill you're on I was like mate I've been through the lot I've li I think I've actually tried every single contraceptive pill in the universe and I didn't even need contraception I was 11 years old anyway I was getting literally this whole entire time that was from year seven till year Till I was in college in 2017, right? I think that's just mad. I was just constantly in pain, constantly in pain. And like, it wasn't just there, it was like, it felt like it was shooting up like my arms, my neck, my legs, like I was always in agony. And my mum was like, it's growing pains. And I was like, oh, fair play, it's growing pains. And I was like, I ain't growing, I'm five foot three. So, October 2017, 
I went to, um, I demanded to see a nurse because I said, I'm sorry, but the GPs aren't listening. I want to see someone else there now. And um, she was fantastic. I basically said to her, if it weren't for seeing her, then this would not have actually progressed. Because I was like, I'm having really bad headaches on the pill. Can you take me off? So she said, yeah, of course, let's actually take you off. I don't know why you've not been taken off yet because being on the pill constantly, especially Celeste, like it can literally make you have a mini stroke. It's mental. Um, so I was taken off because of the migraines and obviously that can lead to having a mini stroke. So they said, right, come off. Um, and I was like, pure buzzing then at this point. I remember I then went on a little weekend away to Manchester. I'm having the time of my life. I was like, I don't need the pill. I don't feel depressed. I feel great. And I thought my period was regulating itself. I was like, oh my God, it's once a month. This is fantastic. Um, and then all of a sudden, nah, it went tits up. Let me tell you, if I just have a look here now. December, so it was only good for two months. Fantastic. It literally went back to the same agonizing period, constantly tired, really heavy flow, like my skin. I wear a lot of makeup and I'm wearing a lot right now. It's the first time I've worn makeup in two weeks, so it feels lovely. Um, yeah, like I don't know, I used to always be like, why is my skin this bad? And it was always just around the chin, which is a telltale sign of it being to do with your womb. I had to look that up. I was like, why is my face looking like this? Anyway, yes. Oh my God. So I wrote, I used to, my mum told me to write down all the pain, like whatever I felt. So I literally wrote a list. Here's the list. I was like, I'm awake all night. I've got a shooting pain in my ribs. My ribs were constant agony. And I thought it was because I was doing ab workouts all the time. But that is not, you shouldn't be getting like shooting pains if you're doing it properly. And I thought, I'm sorry, I'm not having this. And, um, my sister, Raman, fantastic best friend, was the first person to be like, <coughs> she was like, maybe it's endometriosis or polycystic ovaries. And I was like, what the hell is that? Like, I'd never even heard of that in my life. Now I feel like that word is all I hear, endometriosis, because what women talk about. And she was like, go to your nurse and say, I think I've got this. And so I go storming in. I'm like, right, I'm pretty sure this is what I've got. And if I hadn't have done that research and been like, that's what I've got, then oh my god imagine because I still would be in the same position I was in if it weren't for Rihanna and if it weren't for that lovely nurse being like yeah we think you've got that definitely and I said well it would have been nice to know about how many years seven years ago but there we are so basically the nurse was like yeah let's explore this then um because clearly there's lots of underlying issues um and my first thing was an ultrasound is that what yeah, um, with the like gel on the belly and you going like that, just to see if there was any like ovarian cysts or anything, which there was, but they didn't look like cause for concern. I was like, I don't know, it seems like a cause of concern for me, but whatever, you know what you're talking about. Then in the summer, I went to Blackpool. Lovely. I love Blackpool, let's not go on too much. But I went there for my sister's hen do. And I remember on the Saturday morning, after being out on the Friday night, like I was in agony. I was in excruciating pain. And I knew that like this, that was the worst it had ever been. I couldn't stand up. My sister was like holding me up. And like, I couldn't walk up the stairs in Nando's. I felt very sad about that. Um, and my sister Rihanna was just like, right, what the hell? And then my sister Haley's friend gave me some codeine. I thought, smashing, honestly. I shouldn't be recommending, but I, that was probably the only thing that helped me because it was so strong. I felt flying the whole night. Um, yeah, but it shouldn't have had to come to that, you know? Um, so then um, when I got back from Blackpool, me and Joel, we went to Western Hospital and I was like, what's going on? Right, we need answers here. I've been waiting for that appointment for a long time. She said to me, there's nothing more we can do. Um, you have got an STI and you've got to take tablets. And I was like, I don't. I don't think I do love um, so I'm put on these tablets right bear in mind they are so strong that the antibiotics I'm not allowed to drink on them I had another Blackpool trip booked I said right I'm sorry I'm not starting those until I've been to Blackpool 2.0 and we had a smash in time so I'm glad I didn't take them anyway and I had to be on them even though I didn't actually I didn't need to be on them that was what she thought I had and I thought I would know like if I needed these and it's not that what I said so you think I've had an STI since I was 11 years old absolutely not so my next thing 
I rang and I said I'd like to change to the hospital in Bristol St Michael's I did that instead and they were smashing they were smashing so I had um I don't know the actual technical term for it but it's like the camera up not nice oh my god right so it was painful very painful but it basically goes and it's to see like if there's anything in the actual room bloody blah like um that needs seeing to just like quite urgently um and it was so painful I remember they said to me like now oh, don't stand up too quick because you're gonna faint and I was like oh, I ain't gonna faint next thing you know <laughs> I woke up in, in a wheelchair and I'd, I had a digestive biscuit in my hand so clearly they'd been trying to bring me around with that and it worked um and my mum was just being so cute and kind as usual but once again all they saw was the ovarian cyst which wasn't again much of a cause of concern so that was left basically <clears throat> I was still in pain then for like months and months and months I went to uni that September um months and months and months to uni in agony absolute carnage so New Year's Eve I finally got an appointment at um the hospital and I was like I need a laparoscopy which is the small incision in the belly and the camera round to look and see if like what's going on because that's the only way that you can actually tell if you've got it that's the only way they've figured out at the moment which is not nice but it's got to be done and um yeah so then I had to wait till the following June this is a long timeline isn't it it really is long then I found out yes I did have endometriosis on my bladder and on my left ovary I think it's left <coughs> which I kind of sensed all along but um yeah it was nice to actually finally have a diagnosis and while I had that laparoscopy they put in the marina coil which I can't remember if it has the hormones or doesn't have the hormones but I found it to be quite helpful um I wrote down like every time I had some pain on my phone the sort of thing I was experiencing just because I thought like if anyone has similar symptoms to this then you need to get going and get yourself checked so shooting pains in my ribs um, weird shooting pains in my stomach and up my back I'm exhausted really bad skin still spotting blood heavy bleeding painful cramps very bad skin why I put in capital letters um, Still in agony daily, heavy flow, my back's in agony, so I can be knifed. It's not nice, is it? Hobbling, really struggling to walk, which I thought was crazy. Like, I was walking around like, oh my god, I can't even move. Like, I felt like I was eight years old. 80, I said, sorry, my voice is getting worse. Obviously, the main things of endo, like, you get painful, um, painful periods, heavy periods, irregular periods. Um, but there's other things that come with it as well, like, um, painful sex I don't think a lot of people talk about that it's just like that ain't bloody fair I don't think personally what else bad skin the bad skin that really gets me down because like there's never a point where my skin where I don't have some sort of spots like and it, it really does get you down like and another thing with endo you get endo belly they call it so like when you get a flare up your stomach just goes huge and you got your belly out to here and you're like what's why that is not fair either chronic fatigue oh my god right constant constant exhaustion i'm okay at the moment because i've managed to get myself into a, like a really good sleep pattern so really good is like midnight till 9 a.m people do tend to forget that you've got it because like you look put together you look fine and you're just still enjoying yourself and like it's because it's an invisible illness people forget that you've got it so they think you can just like, keep going keep going you're like i can't i'm gonna die because I've got endometriosis on my bladder, like it makes you need, you're like, oh my god, I need a toilet right now. And when I was seeing Celine Dion in London, amazing Hyde Park, can I just say, I couldn't wait in the queue. There was literally hundreds of people, there's thousands and thousands of people in Hyde Park. I'm like, I'm not waiting. So luckily, I was allowed into welfare because of the condition, and Rhiannon, my sister, was absolutely buzzing. I was like, this is not a jolly, Rhiannon, I'm ill. And it was probably because I'd had too many ciders, but still not fair I think people do tend to forget about it because it is an invisible illness and so that's why I wanted to make this video and do the hashtag why we endo March and it is obviously a real shame that we couldn't all meet there tomorrow and I'd have gone to the one in Cardiff because um, it was so good last year it was so nice the other thing I'd like to put as um, I've been having mess <laughs> messages on Twitter and Instagram because I'm famous um, just basically asking me like first of all how, they ma how I managed to get the doctors to listen and how I got the diagnosis and then also um, like what like how the laparoscopy was and the recovery time and like people that are a bit scared about it so first of all with getting the doctors to listen I honestly I just went in with like printed out notes like 
from the internet like I've got this, this, this and this, I know exactly what I've got, I want to like take matters further and find out like what's going on with me because um, I just feel awful and this isn't right and I brought my mum in with me who can be quite scary at times and I kind of just eventually listened like I think I was just in there like, every other week like hi again it's me um, let me in because I need to basically whinge again it's like seven to ten years the diagnosis seems to take in general I found um, with most people that have it which hopefully is going to be getting better because more and more people are becoming educated on it so that'd be fantastic laparoscopy like it was i was terrified i was freaking out about it like um but it was honestly a 45 minute operation they were so good south mead love south mead hospital a uh, tiny little scar it's tiny you can't even see it and like you could get a belly button piercing it'll cover it up if that floats your bone so with recovery time um it literally took a week, like I just sat downstairs vibing on the sofa, getting Don to bring me in cups of tea, looking after me, it was lovely. Um, it was really nice actually. And you kind of, you are in a lot of pain, you can't really walk, and obviously because I'd had the coil, like it just all was, I was like, I can't move. Um, and I kind of just like led on my back in bed sleeping, um, but it passes really quickly. It must have took two, three weeks, and I was out clubbing again, which is lovely. I was just in the club, like, my, my scar, please. I shouldn't have been out but you know we can't wait for too long it's such a tiny procedure and it's so so worth it to find out and actually know and not just think you're going crazy and be taken seriously and have that diagnosis you're just like right lovely i can get on with my life a bit more now basically i just wanted to finish with like if anyone wants to message me um if they feel like they've like had any symptoms or like anything obviously i'm not medically trained i'm not going to diagnose you but i feel like i can like talk you through how I went about like finally getting my diagnosis and stuff I do to help me feel better. Yes, thank you for listening to my ramblings. Maybe I'll do more ramblings because I've got nothing else to do apart from my uni work, which I should do. Um, but yes, um, hopefully um, we'll be seeing a lot of videos uh, tomorrow, today, whatever day I post this, of the endo march and like why we endo march and sort of just supporting the cause and endo awareness month really. But yes, thank you for listening and... See you all soon.